Welcome to a deep dive into long-range blackout ballistics. What do I mean by long-range? Well, I'll be looking at ARs, LMGs, snipers, and TAC rifles, testing them all at a rather extreme range to learn more about the bullet drop and velocity of the different weapons and calibers, including how all that is affected by the suppressor and extended barrel. In a follow-up video, I plan to build on this information to show how you should be aiming to hit shots with all the different weapons and scopes at various ranges, but that'll take a whole lot more testing, and this topic was already pretty large, so in the spirit of having more than one video per month, I've broken that off into its own thing. With that said, let's just jump into it. You may have seen a video a while ago by the man Exclusive Ace, which I will link below, in which he shows the bullet drop of every gun in Blackout. Great video, however I wasn't willing to accept that all of these guns, being most of the tactical rifles, LMGs, and assault rifles, a big mix of calibers, were all the exact same. Especially when there was so much variance among the SMGs. Why would they bother doing that for weapons that aren't that useful at long range, but not for the rifles? seemed odd, so I did a new round of my own testing in which the goal was essentially to zoom in on this part of the diagram to provide more detail. Ace's line of sight was about 410 meters, which I'm not saying was a bad thing, that was a good range to compare the relative drop of every gun, but may have made it difficult to notice any significant difference in that cluster at the top. The spot I chose was up in the sky so I could be shooting roughly horizontally at the top of a wind turbine. It did take some careful flying to land up here every time and keep the helicopter intact, but it was worth it. The line of sight I'm using here is 720 meters. If you want to try it yourself, it's easy to remember. I was shooting from one burning turbine to the only other burning turbine. And yes, as you can see, this was recorded before Grand Heist. I went with a 4 times scope for every gun, as well as trying both the advanced rifling and suppressor if possible. Can't have the suppressor on any sniper or LMG in Blackout. I was very careful in aiming at the top line of the turbine. I fired off several careful shots with each gun and attachment until I got a few that felt accurate, so I could then pick the most accurate one in editing that was right on the line, and also to make sure it was repeatable and it was landing in the same spot each time. I tested every gun from the four categories I mentioned that were able to take a scope. If they can't, like the Zweihander and the Model 7, then they weren't very relevant for the topic of hitting long-range shots with scopes, so I left it out. I actually tried using SMGs and pistols out of curiosity to see if I could plot some of them on there too, but as a result of the extreme range, it just wasn't happening. After a certain point, I couldn't see the tracers anymore, and the shots fell way short of the turbine, even with extended barrel, but again, they aren't very relevant to the topic at hand. Even if you do get an extreme range hit with an SMG, not gonna do a lot of damage, you're just gonna let the guy know you're there, and with the high sway and recoil, not easy to follow up. With all that setup and explanation out of the way, I felt it was important to understand what the testing was about, but here are the results. This is for having no barrel attachment. The colors represent the ammo type used, so the caliber is not exactly what determines the velocity, but you can see a pattern. I was able to separate the weapons into seven distinct categories of travel speeds. I'll explain why I'm confident in those later. Now to add in the extended barrel and suppressor, you can see how they compare. Extended barrel had a very clear effect, around a 30 to 34% increase in the average travel speed. Looking on the right at the suppressor, well, the only thing that chart is showing is that you can't put a suppressor on an LMG or a sniper, otherwise it's the same as the middle. The suppressor did not have any effect whatsoever on the travel speed, and thereby the bullet drop was the same as well. Just so we're clear, whenever I'm talking about travel speed or bullet drop, I'm talking about the same thing. Since gravity isn't changing, the amount of time it takes to travel to the turbine is how much time in the air it has to drop. There is drag in Blackout, but no wind pushing it around. We don't need to get deep into aerodynamics. Anyway, the suppressor does not affect muzzle velocity. Ace found the same thing as well in his video. That is a common misconception, because it can feel like you're really lobbing bullets around with a suppressor on. But nope, the suppressor does some other things we'll touch on later. So I'll remove that redundant chart and replace it with the numbers. These are the average velocities of all the long-range scoped weapons with and without extended barrel. You may see that and think, those all look very low. What, are all the rifles subsonic? That can't be right. But this is the average over the entire 720 meters. This is not the muzzle velocity. I just mentioned drag, and bullet velocity does decrease over time in Blackout. In fact, one of the little map loading tips will tell you that. To get a slightly better handle on muzzle velocity, I did a 100 meter test with just a couple guns as an example. Frame rounding does become a bigger issue when you're dealing with close range, but I took a few shots and averaged them. 
From the Category 1 weapons being the slowest, the Vapor had a 100 meter velocity of about 600 meters per second, and the SDM from Cat 6 was up at about 850 meters per second. Those are some reasonable numbers, although you might expect the 556 Vapor to have a faster initial muzzle velocity than the larger calibers. In fact, that's something they talked about when Treyarch did a declassified episode on ballistics. I feel like I should mention that at some point. It seems relevant. It was a cool video. They talk about how they use the G7 ballistics model for drag, and talk about how 556 may start out faster than 762, but then it slows down faster, and even showed some cool charts that made it look like they might have been straight out of the game, with some velocities of different guns labeled with a legend at the bottom. I was excited to see if my testing could match up with what they had there, but it didn't at all. None of the numbers or even the relative positions of those lines seemed to mean anything. Even at close range, like you saw, the Vapor was a good deal slower than the SDM. But I guess that's what they were alluding to when at the end of the video, they said, well, you have to balance the fun of the experience with the fidelity. We're not making a bullet simulation software, we're making a video game. Which, fair enough, but basically saying about their video, this whole thing was fun and all, but uh, throw it all out the window because it isn't actually how the game works. That was disappointing. But not as disappointing as them not releasing this testing map. Holy hell, dude, look at that thing. Every gun, an attachment, a labeled shooting range. That's exactly what I was asking for them to have months before the game came out. This was my only wish. Just release that map so we can properly test and practice with all the guns as a community. You have that thing sitting right there taunting us with that. What is wrong with you making everyone who wants to test something run around and loot the blackout map for hours? I don't want any DLC maps. I just want you to release that thing in private matches. God damn. Back to the topic at hand, we've got some long range average velocities here that I used to group the weapons into those seven distinct categories. I said I'd explain how I got there. I know that no testing method is without error, but if I made a separate dot on this image, then rest assured it wasn't just because of a rough guess. I typically took a screenshot of the bullet hitting the turbine and overlaid it on here to get an idea of where it landed, a bit better than just eyeballing it, but far more accurate was using the amount of time it took from firing the shot to hitting the turbine. That time measurement could be one or two frames off, being 16 milliseconds per frame at 60 FPS, but not much more than that. Here is the raw data I entered from the footage, and I simplified that into this by manually doing some rounding. I did make some assumptions there, so probably doesn't matter to most people, but for the sake of transparency, what I did was look at patterns and which guns appeared to have roughly the same properties. Like as an example of what I did round and what I did not, it looked like these top four 5.56 weapons were all about the same at 2.767 seconds. Only in two cases were they one frame off, so I went with the majority and rounded those two down. Also, the ICR extended barrel was one frame off in the other direction, so I rounded that up to match the 2.1. Same for these two 5.56 TAC rifles, it looked like the suppressed swordfish was one frame off, looking at the rest of the numbers, rounded that one up. However, now look at the SWAT and the KN versus the Augur and the Rampart. I measured all of their extended barrel times to be 1.933, yet the Rampart and Augur base times were consistently three frames faster than the KN and the SWAT. I went back and checked it multiple times on multiple bullets fired, they were clearly a tiny bit faster. And I wasn't comfortable rounding off three whole frames, so I kept them separate, even though in-game, for all intents and purposes, they aren't different enough for you to need to treat them any differently, but they didn't seem to be the same. So yeah, I don't think many people will care about that at all, but if I'm going to pick numbers to round off, I'll be transparent about it, I don't want you to think I'm making up data. So where does that leave us? I have these seven categories that I'll be using in the next video about hitting long-range targets, but there are a few more points of interest to cover here, one being sound. You may have experienced getting shot at and hearing the sonic booms of bullets cracking as they fly by you. What I wanted to know was, how does that work? We know from last time the speed of sound is accurately represented in Blackout. So does the bullet actually have to be faster than the speed of sound to create that cracking noise? It appears the answer is no. 
Thank you, Knackle, once again for helping with the range testing here. He fired some shots in my direction, both with the ICR and Paladin, those representing the Cat 1 and Cat 7 speeds, at every 100 meter interval out to 500 meters. Also with and without the extended barrel and suppressor. What we found was that the crack of a bullet flying by you has nothing to do with the bullet velocity. Rather, if somebody shoots in a small bubble around you, imagine a sphere only a few meters in diameter around your character. If a non-suppressed bullet from any of these weapons flies through that sphere, you will hear the crack of it flying by. This is 100 meters, and if a shot flies by outside of that area, you only hear a fainter sound of the bullet whizzing through the air. And that did not change, even out to 500 meters. This is the ICR firing at me. And now the ICR bullet being a bit farther away from me. Now the Paladin fired at me. And the Paladin being aimed a bit further away. The takeaway from that is you can hear the Paladin bullet fly by before you hear the Paladin firing. It is supersonic, I showed the exact same thing in the previous video, but with the ICR, it's the opposite. You can hear the ICR fire before you hear the bullet. It started out supersonic, but the sound caught up and passed the bullet on the way to 500 meters, and yet they both made the exact same cracking noise when they passed by. So it would have been cool, but the speed of the bullet doesn't seem to actually matter when it comes to that sonic boom. What does matter is the suppressor. Equipping a suppressor, no matter what the speed of the projectile is, will completely eliminate that sonic boom. We tested that with a weapon from every category that can take a suppressor, and had the same result. That doesn't really make any sense. We already know the suppressor does not affect bullet velocity in Blackout, but that is how it works. This is what a suppressed ICR sounds like at 100 meters being fired at me. And being fired away. That is very quiet, only a hundred meters away, that isn't an extreme range, and you already practically can't even hear the gun at all. There's one little tap you can make out when I boosted the audio up, but in the background of a blackout game that would blend right in. There's really only the sound of the bullet whizzing by you, and for whatever reason, no sonic boom either. You get very little information on where the shots are coming from. So the suppressor will not help you land long range shots with greater ease, like the extended barrel will, but it doesn't hinder your trajectory either, it's the same as the base bullet drop and travel time, and the stealth advantage should not be underestimated. The extra time it'll take for someone to figure out where they're getting shot from, and where to take cover, could be all you need to get the kill. It might be an especially good attachment in this upcoming hardcore blackout mode. The only other thing to mention with the suppressor and extended barrel is that there is a small impact on your damage drop off over range, about 10% better with the extended barrel and 10% worse with the suppressor. So that is the one downside of the suppressor, but not a big one. I would consider it to be a valuable attachment. Not a bad idea to have one of each, an extended barrel rifle for long range accuracy and something suppressed to bamboozle people at closer ranges. One extra tidbit of information, for the SWAT, and only for the SWAT as far as I can tell, equipping the suppressor seems to completely remove your tracers. Every other suppressed gun, I could see them just fine. With the SWAT, you can't see the bullets as they fly through the air, making you even stealthier. They just recently nerfed the damage and idle sway of the SWAT in Blackout and added a bit of recoil, but it still maintains the 762 ballistics for whatever reason up there with the KN, and it has this unique property with the suppressor which can make it pretty hard for teams to identify where you're shooting from, cause the tracers really stand out in this game otherwise. So the suppressed SWAT, give it a go. Before we wrap up here, maybe the best part about knowing all this about Bullet Drop is that it even works underwater. Like the Flex Seal family of products, that's right, it couldn't be further from realistic, but Bullet Drop underwater appears to be the same as in the air. 
You can't throw grenades very far at all underwater, that looks pretty real, but bullets fly just fine, because video game. That isn't very useful at all, because an underwater fight is very rare, and you can't see anyone at extreme range, unless they have a bright background, like a border closing in behind them, then you can see their silhouette easily, but good to know, maybe? Hopefully you now know more about long-range ballistics in Blackout, and can confidently pick between the extended barrel and suppressor, depending on the situation. I'll be working on using this to go more in-depth on how high to aim to hit targets with different weapons and scopes at all ranges. That should be fun. Until then, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.